Welcome all of you this interesting lectures on river engineering. This is a introduction lectures on river engineering. You all uh, know about uh, river engineering and you all have seen uh, rivers uh, in different part of your life. But today we are going to start uh, the engineering aspect of the river concept that is what uh, we are looking at. And, uh, oh, Today lectures, I just uh, being a introduction lectures, uh, I will just talk about a brief note on hydrological issues. Okay. What are the issues are there in Indian uh, basins? Uh, that is the V6 uh, idea that what is the problems are there and what are the reference book and uh, eminent scientist on this subject. Then also I will talk about major river projects which is constructed okay. and what is their performance, okay. how they are fulfilling their major objective and the recent area if you talk about the physical mathematical modeling, some of the case studies I will show it and then I will tell you. So, what is the planning of lecture series for these courses. So, that is what I will discuss on today uh, lectures. Uh, look at eminent river scientist. Okay. Let me have Albert F. Shield, okay. very beginning of considering the fluvial experiment in the plume to try to understand it the incipient motions, how the sediment particles are moving from the bed that what you try to understand it and try to have a knowledge on the sediment transport because if you talk about the rivers we, we have to talk about the sediment we have to talk about energy dissipations. So, the famous Albert F. Shield developed the sediment transport formulas or the sediment curves which is we have a shield curves or shield numbers and that is what is very early studies uh, makes us uh, uh, understanding the complex process between water and sediment transports in regional river systems. Then uh, Professor Graf, uh, W. F. Graf looking for beyond these rivers looking for the human impacts on the rivers morphologies, the process of contaminated transport. Okay. Uh, rife air and habitat changes in the rivers that is what is the issues. So, today is most of the Indian rivers we have a, these are the issue of water qualities, river health. These are studies which are started by Professor W. L. Graf and that is what is uh, the pluvial process in dry land rivers, dam river walls and science and decisions. And Indian scientist, he you know it, uh, Professor R. J. Kade. Uh, he is a, uh, he was a professor in IIT Hiruki. Uh, he has contributed on turbulent flow, river morphology, and the fluid mechanics. He tried to combine the morphology, turbulent flow, fluid mechanics try to understand the water sediment transport process and very unique lab setups in IIT Ruki it was established to study uh, the process of the fluvial hydraulics. So, if you look at this uh, there are many scientists there in this field I just want to highlight it uh, from Albert F. Seal to R. J. Gade. So, a lot of experimental studies uh, conducted very precisely try to understand the water and sediment transport process which is uh, the complex processes and as well as uh, uh, Professor W. F. Graf is try to understand it human impacts on the river morphology process. Now, if you look at today what challenge you have very interesting challenge part we have today especially uh, Indian river basins. Uh, today there is not having a independent process way we look it uh, like uh, 
hydrodynamic process separately, sediment transport process differently, morphology process differently, hydrology process are different and uh, the society, the human being interventions. All we look at in separate entity, that does not happen it. All are very much integrated concept. Okay. If you talk about the river dynamic cycles, okay, how the rivers are changing it, uh, is so dynamic, it is interlinked with hydrology, fluvial processes, the long term morphology change and also the driving factors like society or the human being. The river dynamic process linked to hydrology, fluvial process, morphology and the suicide. Now, if you look at that, what it happens is uh, in the last few decades that we have a alternative concept like a river modeling. So, okay, there are a lot of mathematical modeling concept has come out and uh, tools are available, models are available, try to look at the similar behavior of what it happens in natural rivers that what we can represent mathematical models. There are lot of significant development happen in physical modelings that is what I will show it. Uh, there are good set up of physical model of river models are there. Not only that there are lot of advanced measurements that are happening today okay, which it was not possible so maybe. Uh, 20 years back, but now it is a possible to do the data collection at the river levels. It is a possible that is what I will show some photographs for you that the advanced measurement of the things is also possible. So, that way there is significant development happens in these three directions. Okay. Uh, mathematical models, physical models, physical models interacting with all are interacting each other, so, uh, each, uh, each one is a complementary to each others. There is no superiority of physical model or mathematical model of uh, the field data. All are interlinking each others to enhance the knowledge of the river mechanics. Try to understand the sediment transport process, the hydrodynamic process, the tolerance process in a rivers with respect to energy dissipation nutrient transport all we have to try to look it as as a river we, we try to look it how the process happens it. So, for that reasons we need to have a all these three tools physical modelings, river modeling and also the advanced measurement all should be having a complementing to each other to have a knowledge on the river. So, upon uh, the river morphology is also a part of now in a planning okay, which earlier is a considered to be a long term process, but now the river morphology also is considered is a part of planning in river health and the river engineering. So, if you look at this all are interlinking each others at the applications level it is a advancing levels of modeling, physical modeling, river mathematical modeling, physical modeling, advanced measurement. Similar way if you look at the planning, planning also we should look at river health. I am talking about what quality which is a major issue in our countries. So, river health, the ecological health of rivers, river engineering as well as the morphology all are linked each others. If you look at these six blocks it is changing it is that also we have linked with this part okay. because as we have a knowledge about the rivers that is what will be give us a confidence or to take a appropriate decisions on what type of river engineering we should implement. So, that is the reasons if you look at that uh, both the things are happening it and as you implement the river engineering any projects like maybe a barrage project, maybe a uh, uh, river training works, you have to try to understand using the advanced equipments uh, how, how what is the performance of that structures you that is what you can also look at. So, if you try to look at uh, these figures the river modeling, physical modeling, advanced measurement 
morphology, river health and river engineering and I can bracket it their society they are the socio economical benefits that is what is the basic uh, things. Mostly also we ignore one part the river help us to maintain say big cycles at the society point of view that water, food, energy nexus. The river also play major roles to make it as sustainable uh, benefits uh, uh, or socio-economic benefits. If I try to manage, try to understand how the water, food, energy nexus happening a particular river system which varies from river to river. Like the concept what I developed for the Brahmaputra, I, I, I cannot apply the same things for the Godavari rivers or the same things for the Narmada river. So, all these concepts we have to understand locally at the regional levels and also you have the broad knowledge at the global scales. That is that's my concept to, to bring you this course and uh, that uh, based on that concept I have designed this course for you uh, to go next levels. Now, if you look at the books what I am going to follow it uh, in river mechanics okay, P Y Julian books which is a very interesting book. Also fluvial hydrodynamics uh, looking at new modeling, new measurement technique discussing on the hydrodynamic and sediment transport phenomena. Uh, that is what we will follow it uh, by the book authored by Professor Suvasiste. Then we will have a very interesting book looking for ecologist point of view is a stream hydrology and introductions for ecologist. Okay. It is a group of professors have written these books, very interesting books that way. So, what I am to tell you that it is a combination of that one side is river mechanics, the fluvial hydrodynamics and the stream hydrology and introductions for ecologists. Not only that we have to follow some of reported journals okay, like uh, journal of hydrology, journal of hydraulic engineering and journal of sediment research. Now, if you look at some major projects in our country, the Hirakud Dam projects which is located uh, on Mahanadi River in Odisha. So, if you can look at the dam projects, okay, you, you can see this bird's eye view of Hirakud Dam projects. This project is a one of the projects what is was initiated in 1956 okay, way back. Okay close to 70 years back. Okay. Longest uh, major earthen dam in the world which is having closely 26 kilometers. The biggest artificial lake okay, in India which covers 745 kilometers square approximately. So, close to 750 square kilometers area. You, you can understand it, it artificial lake. That is what is to create the for the flood management, uh, water balance okay. and also nowadays this is a major source for water supply for industry and the domestic wage. So, if you look at these projects which is 70 years old projects still it is running it with a hydro powers, the irrigations and the project cost in 1957 it was 100 crores. The last year I just discussed with uh, river project authorities. The annual return, annual return from hydropowers and the water sulphates is coming very close to 100 crores per years. So, that is what I am to tell you that these big projects what is there. Uh, we, we, we can look at 1956 that is 100 crores. Now, the annual return of these projects is coming from water supply to industry, the domestics and the hydro powers that is what is close to 100 crores and this is the lifeline of the 
for the water resources in the state of Odisha. So, if you look at that, this is what one of the major interventions uh, we did it. Same if you look at this uh, Bhagra Nangal projects, which is an interesting project, we will be having uh, the reservoir of 166 kilometer squares, it is just have a 1963 that and to basically to, to prevent the plots okay, and to provide the irrigations of this that is and the hydropower projects. That is what if you look at that how basic features the, the power generation part as well as this the projects part. If you look at that what I am to say it, there are the projects existing in our countries and that is the interventions we have done for the rivers. Same way uh, if you look at uh, very interesting projects which is, is the Faraka Beres projects okay, uh, that is the, the bridge is connecting between northeast and the, uh, the west Bengals. So, those bridge is there and four lane bridge with a barrage structures uh, is known as Faraka Beres and that is the barrage if you look at it is major ob objective of that barrage to divert around 800 cumex of the waters from Ganga to Hooghly rivers, which was a dying river before this projects the uh, implementation because be, before the implementations of the diversions projects the Hooghly rivers which it was earlier known as the Ganga rivers. Uh, many of the people also believe that is a part of the Ganga systems. So, uh, if you look at that way. Uh, that Hooghly rivers regenerated by the Faraka various projects which provides have been providing 800 cumic of these cells diverting from Ganga to the Hooghly river systems. So, if you look at that it is quite successful projects no doubt there are disadvantage and advantages are there, but because of this C projects it is sustain the basically Kolkata city because uh, the existence of the Hooghly rivers talks about the existence of the Kolkata city. So, if you look at that this is the projects which is implemented in 1970s it is it's really is a big project help us our country to survive a dying river like Hooghly rivers just uh, about 1975 okay it's just 50 to 60 years back and it is what uh, helped us to survive the kolkata city as well as the hooghly rivers so if you look at that all the projects is tells us a successful stories on how we managed our river systems uh, same way uh, you if you look at this another interventions what we did it uh, it is a Koshi barrage just it is situated the border of India and Nepal and this barrage help us to mitigate the floods which is which was earlier is a annual floods because of that the Koshi was known to sort of Bihars. Okay. It has been successfully managing these floods still there are the issues are there to how to manage the floods the barrage and the embankments what is helping it to reducing the floods in the Bihar where earlier it was known as sorrow of the Bihars. So, if you look at that way uh, uh, the 50 or 60 years back we are supposed to be a leader on river interventions, leader on the knowledge of river, the sediment transport river dynamics, the sediment transport, the nutrient transport and we are well managing with the rivers with some intervention structures. So, if you look at this COSI where it is uh, the details informations how we have done the interventions of the river major river project uh, rivers in Indian uh, part uh, in Indian river systems like uh, COSI where is the Faraka where is Mahanadi uh, Irakutu dam projects all it says that there are certain amount of knowledge we had and we need we also try to do a managing the river in uh, different ways uh, in, in in 
having understanding about the river systems. It is a necessary to develop knowledge pillars on river mechanics, the sediment transports and the nutrient transport or the energy dissipation. The course is meant for that uh, uh, giving it to you the glimpse is that. Uh, more interestingly now you look at uh, like a national waterways. Okay. So, there are the national waterways okay, uh, one okay, so which is uh, connecting from Allahabad to uh, Sundarbans, Haldia port, national waterways 2, we have a national waterways 5. So, if you look it like a national highways, we have a national waterways. There are lot of issues, lot of improvement we can do it to make this river navigable. And what is the advantage to have a river navigable? You can go through the websites of Inland Waterways Authority of India, which will talk about how we should develop national waterways and how we can develop the tourist. The river will be navigable. We can develop the tourist. We can have a goods movements, and we can think it the transport mechanisms what we presently have. Uh, road network based transport mechanisms or the railway networks, the inland waterways also can play the major roles for us for in these centuries can play a major role for us. Still we have lot of challenges uh, to implement as a waterways of national waterways 2, 5 and other case. So, what my point is that there are lot of opportunities for us to understand the rivers now and try to have this the best options what is available to us. Now, if you look at very interesting photographs of 1893s, okay, uh, if you look at this uh, cable okay, connected with that and person is sitting on this, this is what the current meters, this is what the current meters and the persons are collecting the data. So, if you can see that how much of risk the person took it to just do a survey in a rivers. But today we have a uh, much more uh, technology driven the river service like if you have a the river vessel surveys can equip with GPS global positioning systems to know it where it is. You can have a acoustic Doppler current profilers, you can measure three dimensional velocity components, okay. you can measure the sediment concentrations, you can measure the flow depth, you can have a eco sounders, you can have a side sonar profiler and there are the softwares inbuilt. So, you can look at that with the previous data, the uh, plot planes, river courses, all these informations can integrate it and that is what you can do it with having a very good facilities like the river survey vessels. So, we have a transforms ourselves from this manual defense, the velocity measurement of the, in the rivers to a very, very advanced equipments with a survey vessels, GPS, acoustic Doppler current profiler, eco sounder, side sun sonar and river softwares, the many more. Nowadays, the technologies are coming to inbuilt uh, make a river survey is much simpler as compared to earlier. Now, if you look it, uh, I want to show it what we did it as a water resource uh, pluvial groups in under me, we conducted a river surveys in the three stretches, okay? three locations. Okay? And if you look at the Brahmaputra rivers as the Google Earth images showing it that this weight itself will be more than 10 kilometers. Okay? So, that is the reason we cannot do a traditional survey. This width could be more than 3 kilometers, this width could be more than 4 kilometers. Just look at the dimensions of the rivers. So, if you look at these rivers and if you do the survey with this type of vessels, very interesting knowledge we get it. Just trying to show you the velocity distributions. If you look at the river survey, what we have done it, and this is the bed, and you can understand it the high velocity zones, low velocity zone, 
there are the secondary current formations are happening it. The vertical circulations are also happening it. This is what the field level of measurements. This is what the field level of measurement, the prime velocities are varying from 0 0.5 to 2 meter per seconds and the velocity, vertical velocity is not that higher, it is centimeter per seconds and there are the vertical circulations you can see. So, if you, if you look at today's we can measure at the river levels how this velocity distributions are happening it. Not only that you can also have a sediment concentrations variabilities. If you can look at the sediment concentrations variability in the rivers in some cases it can go it as high it is about 1500 milligram per liters and the some case in average conditions can have a, a 300 to 400 milligram per liters. So, what I am to telling you that uh, if you do a river surveys, uh, you can understand it how the transport mechanisms are happening, how the velocity fields are happening it. The primary velocity, the vertical velocities, uh, secondary currents, vertical circulations, all the informations now today we can get it if you do a thorough survey in a river like Brahmaputra where we have a lot of challenging tax. Same way if you look it, if I replicate it into my hydro fluvial hydro ecology labs. So, if you look at the river meanders with the flood plains and if we can use a instrument like acoustic Doppler velocity meters and with a color dyes. So, you can see the how the turbulence structures are happening it, all this energy distribution is happening it. So, this is the scale down models that is scale down flume experiment. Now, if you look it we have real field conditions also we have the lab conditions. The same way if you look at another lab setup which is their physical river modeling at the NIT Raulkela. See if you look at the river manders, okay. just to look at the river mandering things okay. and you can have uh, these instruments with the river manderings and you can measure it exactly how the velocity distributions are happening, how the secondary current formations are happening. I try to tell that when now we have uh, the laboratory setups to try to understand it the river mechanics at the plume level. The same way if you look at that uh, like what the study we have done for Brahmini rivers which having this river photographs and the verets and these are the all these river crux sections okay? and very detailed study what we had did it as a mathematical modeling one dimensional models with a very detailed crux sections data with mathematically putting this same barrier structures here and the cross sections at this like this. If you look at that, we, we also got very interesting results conducting this mathematical models. Uh, this is what the observed velocity distributions, this is the real field conditions and that is what is mathematical models. So, if you, if, if you can try it, combine it mathematical models with the real field conditions, how the real field conditions are coming, some sort of approximation in doing a mathematical model which we will discuss later on. And we have the velocity measurements at the field levels as well as the mathematical models. I just try to show you that how the advanced tool of ma uh, river models can be used to predict how the flow behaviors are there. Same way also we conducted for dam break analysis for a rivers with Kapili river in Assam. If you look at the river setups, photographs and all considering the dam breaks, we try to look at how the flood is propagating it and with help of HECRS and the GIS, we, we can able to show this type of photographs, this type of maps to clearly uh, indicating it to the people, the planners, the flood inundations map, dam break flood, death variations, 
and the velocity variations. So, if you look at these figures, the flow depth variations are there with a 100 year return period, design flood and then break flood. So, if you can prepare this type of flood zoning map for a by conducting a mathematical modelings, detailed cross section informations and then if you prepare this of the data, uh, I, I think this will be a really great helpful for planning this flood uh, management strategies, which we, which we generally do not do it. So, that is what is my point is that we can look at this way, how efficiently data we are getting it, uh, uh, what will happen it even there is a dam break, 100 years plot or the design plot that is what you can be obtain it by conducting the dam breaks uh, artificially. So, uh, if you look at that way, uh, uh, similar way I can have a lot of examples which I will be uh, discussing in my lecture thoroughly. So, uh, if you look at uh, that part, I need to design the course layouts in the three ways. One is basic knowledge, second is the advanced knowledge we should have, third is that you should have a design practices. What is the design practice happening? It? Because we have to protect the river bank, we have to have the planning of the floodings, also we have to look for the water qualities, the ecologic point of view. Looking that the first few lectures will have a physical properties of the sediment, where we talk about uh, shape of the sediment particles, size distributions, thermal and fall velocity, suspended sediment mixtures, which is the basic knowledge of sediments. Okay. Then we will talk about hydrodynamic, here I will go for mass conservation equations, momentums and energy kernel equations from three dimensional to two dimensional approximations like sediment equations part. So, the basically we will go for three dimensional structures to the one dimensional with a simplifications river models. So, which is advanced knowledge will be there. The river flood waves which is very critical which we talk about celerity, diffusive waves, loop rating curves with advanced knowledge on the flood waves that is what will be there. Then we have a sediment transports in the rivers. So, basically we will talk about near bed hydraulics, bed load, suspended sediment concentrations, problems bursting, this is a very interesting problems. The knowledge, the recently last two decades what is happened, the turbulence characteristics, the sediment transport that what is as advanced knowledge levels, that is what I will design. Then we have a river equilibrium, river dynamics, which is require for designing a stable alluvial channels, we will be discuss about the regime relationship, channel stability, particle stability, river meanderings. Same way we have a river dynamics which is a morphological knowledge is necessary for appropriate river training work. Uh, not only that, uh, there are very interesting the river bank stability things we also do talk about where we will talk about bank erosion process, river bank riprap, revetment which is a design concept, river protections work, river flow control structures that is what we will plan for river bank protections. River bank stabilizes mostly the design concept, the difficulties and the designing all will be discussed on that. Then we will come to river engineering where we will talk about more interestingly bridge cover navigations waterways as discussed of national waterways, locks and dams, the dredgings. So, this is what the advanced level of designing and planning for the rivers. Then you will have the physical river models which will have a one lecture talking about the difference between rigid bed models and mobile which is a part of the design. Whenever you do a any big projects, we do mathematical model as well as we do the physical river models. That is what we plan it with a 24 lectures, okay, including today introductions lectures. Before uh, leaving these things, I just want to show you that 
whenever you try to understand of the rivers, first you sketch a rivers. When you sketch a river, you will have a knowledge about the rivers. Just I am a, a preliminary sketching is what I am doing it. The river, if you look at the plant forms, it never follows straight path. Okay. That is what is the concept is that. As it never follows a straight path, if I take uh, the cross sections at the different points, okay, like uh, at this point that if you have uh, the river cross sections, okay, at the point A and the point V sections, the cross sections of A because of the centrifugal forces, you will have uh, these values. Okay. If you look at that, uh, you will have a cross sections like shape like this. So, that means you will have a this is the outer band and this is the inner band and you will have a uh, you will have uh, super elevations you will have a secondary current formations but if you take a section at a n to a same way if you talk about the b and b you can have a a simple parabolic structure profiles with having a smaller small current profiles like this. So, here the centrifugal forces is making a, a strong secondary currents the same way the secondary currents were will be there here, but that strength will be much lesser than this part. So, similar way if you always sketch like this same river if I have the floods okay, that is what if I have the plots, okay. this is what that, that means the river and the water will be there in the flood plain regions, will be there in flood plain regions. So, if I just sketch it, the cross sections will be same way and here there will be the vegetations in the flood plain area and here you have a bed materials and you have a vegetations here. And this is the flood levels. So, if you look it and here you have just, so if you sketch a river, you can try to understand it how the river processes are happening it. So, what I am trying to say it, whenever you have uh, not understanding the river mechanics, I try to encourage you sketch a river. If you sketching a river, then you can try to understand it that what is happening it. You just try to make it a sketching practice uh, as a river engineer specialist, you can do a sketching and we can try to understand it how the river process is happening. With this let me I conclude today uh, introductions classes and uh, talking these quotations which is given by Mohandas K. Gandhis. Okay, uh, that earth provides enough to satisfy every man's greed, need, no, but not every man's greed. Okay, that's the basic understanding we should have for a river management concept. This is my uh, PhD students who are helping for preparing these course materials, and I would thank you for them to be part of this. But uh, with this, uh, let, let me I conclude this lecture. Thank you.